Hello and welcome to I Am Organic Gardening. My name is Mark and this is my beautiful farm which is fully organic, located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey, and my large kitchen garden. And today I'd like to talk to you about the most important stage in growing sweet corn. It is right now when the tassels start coming out, they come out very quickly. Uh, this was, uh, you can see no tassels about even three to five days ago. Now they're coming out, they're dropping the pollen on the silks already, and you couldn't even see the corn, they were just small ears, and now they have all the silks. Now here's a good example of all the silks, it's in the middle of your screen here. They work from, from the left here to right, and that's all the silks along the corner. Let's get a better picture for you. Here you can see those brand new silks coming out, waiting to be pollinated by the upper part of the plant, dropping its pollen down onto the silks. So why is this the most important stage in growing corn? Because we need to protect it from above and from the side. The side is from all the critters that are going to be coming into the garden looking for that beautiful corn to nibble on. Your skunks, your um, possums, your raccoons, squirrels. Uh, from above, crows, any type of other birds that wish to feed on it, and most of all, the corn earworm. So the first protection we're going to use from this side is stop our raccoons and possum and other things that can walk or crawl up to it, including deer, is we're going to use an electric fence. Now these aren't cheap to get, but if you wish to have your sweet corn not to be eaten, or you want to donate at least 20 to 30 percent, you're going to have to do something like this. I've tried other fences like metal types or everything else too. Raccoons will uh, crawl over that within let's say 30 seconds and don't even stop. I don't care how high it is or chicken wire and else too. Raccoons and foxes will just make a mess out of it and just keep going. If anybody else has tried something different besides electric fence and had success, please leave a comment below because I'm always looking for alternative ways to share with other people and just like you're you know, going to give us the information, we appreciate it in advance to stop those animals from coming in. If you get quite a bit of damage and you know it's working at least 90% of the time, please share with us what you do. Now, how do we protect our beautiful sweet corn that we're waiting so long to eat that's so delicious from above, from those nasty crows that will get after it after a while? Uh, there really is no other way except to do some type of netting on top. Uh, again, you have to build some type of trellis. Very expensive to do to protect your sweet corn. So obviously you're going to be donating most of it to the, uh, the crows. Hopefully they leave you some behind. There really is no other way. I know people use uh, try to some type of scaring system else too. But crows are very smart animals, birds. And they just know how to get around things. They train themselves year to year. So if you come up with something new, they'll just take a week or two to figure it out and then they'll just continue to do. Actually, they've done research and uh, crows are pretty much the, uh, one of the smartest birds around to do things, especially multitasking. So now how do we protect this beautiful corn cob and its silk from the dreaded corn earworm? As soon as the silk starts coming out of the cob down here, this is the silk, and there's plenty of it. This gives off the scent, and that will attract the corn earworm moth to come down here and lay eggs all over the silk and even on the corn cob itself. So you have choices. There are some sprays out there that are organic. You can even use your neem oil, but very lightly, and you have to go after this silk every two to three days because once the eggs are laid from that moth, it only takes, again, two to three days before they hatch and develop and start going down inside. And I'll show you a picture of what the corn earworm moth looks like. We have several examples here of the corn earworm. Now, the wingspan is from tip to tip here is about an inch and a half wide. Once that moth has laid its uh, very small tiny eggs that you need almost a magnifying glass of about a, a 10x to identify or even see them, it grows into this uh, larvae, which is quite large. Now, this larvae, once it reaches full size, depending on weather, will crawl out of the corn cob, back down the corn stalk, and bury itself into your ground. And it will, uh, they call it pup pupates into the, in the soil once it's buried itself in there. And then it will uh, go through the next generation and emerge as a moth, 
within uh, anywhere from 10 to 25 days. Now we have our corn plant working against us here, sending off a fragrance to attract that moth. Now once a moth lays its eggs, and there will be several of them per each uh, time that it's laying the eggs, only one out of let's say 10 or to 20 eggs that are laid will they all hatch, but only the strongest one, larvae, will eat all the other ones even when they're in the small stage and only one will continue down inside the ear itself and that will be the strong dominating one because that's the one that's going to hatch and return to flight and then obviously over winter and then cause damage again next year. Now also what's going on we have this beautiful tassel on top and it's opening up and you can see and it's just I don't know if it's mason bees out this time of the year or a bumblebee, and they're just flying around. I'm going to say there's probably at least 20 to 30 of them around me right now on the side plants here. But this tassel will open up and create these little pollen seeds. Maybe this is a better shot for you. As long as I can get it to focus. You can see here, and I'll keep turning the leaf a little bit, and there's one of those bees. I don't know if it's a mason bee or not. You can see right above the leaf now. It has a lot of pollen on its leg. Very cool. Now it's doing its job, but you can see all the pieces that fall down, and then there's this light yellow dusting already on top of this leaf, and that's what falls down upon the silks later on, and that will pollinate it very well and do a fantastic job making my delicious sweet corn. So now I'm checking the color of the corn. It looks nice and green and healthy. There's no what you can tell also too on the side of each leaf, as long as the leaf edges are not damaged or dark brown, that means it's receiving lots of water and plus the foliage is upright, meaning like so, and the leaves aren't curled extremely like this. That means it has, when, it's, when the leaves are like this or something like that, that means it's uh, being stressed and has lack of water. So now this time we have plenty of water going on and now we have that ear forming. Now I'm going to pick this as is because I want to show you what's inside of this. So let's open this up. These plants are about six weeks old, so anywhere from, let's say, 42 to 50 days old. I don't know when I originally planted them. I have to look back in my book of things here. Now, what's really cool is that, so, why it's so important now, this is the stage that is so important to do, is because you can see except for I just damaged the corn on the bottom here, how perfect that ear of corn is already right now. So it can become more damaged later on by insects, but you can see everything. Now, it's so delicate too. You can see where I push my thumb opening this up and I actually pop the little corn kernels there and down below on the bottom. They're not deformed, that's for me just being a little bit too aggressive. Now let's go and let's see. And you can see all this beautiful silk that's coming out and will continue to grow. Now, this silk is also that pathway to the corn earworm that will come down and follow this silk inside and start eating all this. Also too, just as a good thing, you can eat this right now as is, and it's delicious. This is fully edible, this part right here, this whole thing, is fully edible right now to eat. So that's also why you want to jump in and protect your corn crop, and that's why you'll see it's damaged early in the season, because the raccoons are looking for this too, and the crows know about it also. But they actually wait until the sweetest part of this corn being formed, and they'll have a delicious feast because they know the corn's not going anywhere, and they'll just look for other things. They're just waiting for their own treat to come later on. But you can see everything is in perfect development so far, and now, again, like I said, this is another important stage, the most important stage, and you want to keep it that way. And you keep it that way because corn is a grass and loves water. It loves plenty of water with good drainage. And a lot of people say it requires lots of nitrogen. I only added one inch of compost on top of the soil, and I'm growing all this corn organically as is. Now, next year I'll make a whole step process by week by week so I've perfected these things and what to look out for. But we'll just continue till next year where I can go through a complete cycle of how to grow corn organically. And also, I'm going to be covering it next year 
with a fine insect mesh cloth to keep. Wow, I just took a bite of this. It's like biting into a, almost a, a stick of butter. It's super sweet, unbelievable. Really good stuff, thanks. I want to thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope I share something important with you. Please like the video so they can, uh, other people can see it and make it noticeable on YouTube. Now, there's not a lot I do with the corn besides plant it and grow it into uh, with an inch of compost on top of it. Not even, I, and I always say compost, and I'll share with you next year. It's really just an inch of uh, old leaf mold that I put originally on top of the soil. The weeds grow up through it too, as you can see down below, and I'm not worried about it, and it does fine every year. This is my third year growing this, and it's fine. I will get bugs in this. I don't spray it at all. Again, you can use your neem oil to go after it, but be very cautious with it. I personally believe that it does kill ladybugs. There's all the research out there that says it doesn't, but I've actually uh, I've taken some ladybugs and hit it with neem oil just to see what's going on, and I saw that they died off. So I don't wish to kill off some of the other beneficial insects. If you use neem oil and you have seen ladybugs die from it, let me know. Um, it just verifies my th way of thinking also too. But I wish to keep everything as natural as possible. And again, if it just requires to put insect netting on the top, uh, they're reducing the cost every year. So the only thing I have to do, and I'll show you in other things, is basically just plant the seed in the ground and walk away. Uh, maintain the weeds level height at one time, like I showed in the other video about mowing it. And that's it. And I don't have to worry about birds or anything else too. And I'll have some delicious sweet corn. I know it's a lot of work and expense to go after this, but we really don't have too much choices in the future due to is that we've been spraying way too much and uh, bugs are getting immune to the sprays now and also the sprays don't always work. I've never seen a farmer who's sprayed even his corn every three days with uh, chemicals or organic pesticide or organic procedures and they still get problem with earworms. So no matter what you do, it seems to only be so much effective that it won't cure everything on every single one.